the way uh, I use uh, Google Analytics and Google's uh, Search Console, which most of you probably know as uh, it's <coughs> under its previous name, which is uh, uh, Google Webmaster Tools. Um, so this is not so much about presenting the tools themselves. I assume most of you are familiar with it. Uh, if you've never heard about any of those, please raise your hands. Uh, but most of it, you're, you're all familiar with that. So I'm just <coughs> going to talk about how I use them. And this might be also a sort of a sharing experience. If you do things differently, please uh, don't hesitate to, to say it and suggest uh, alternatives um, to how uh, I present this. So, <coughs> uh, that's, I need to switch it on. Um, my background, I developed a search for Ceph, which is initially where I got most of my work done in terms of analytics and search and SEO, generally speaking. Um, we are now doing more extensions, and I <coughs> sorry, uh, sell and support them under the name uh, Weaver, which is my own company, which started some years back, but is now the front end for all these um, extensions. Um, like I said, uh, this is about using those tools. So it's not some. It's, I'm not really going to talk about my, uh, our extensions. It is about usage. Um, it comes from. It still comes from uh, the asset for for self users, very often coming to us and saying, "Okay, uh, you'll see later that in asset for for self, you've got <coughs> uh, graphs from analytics that tells you how your site behaves." But okay, what do I do with these things? How do I use them? What how do I uh, change my site? So a little bit of insight about it. Um, to illustrate that, in, and this is a, um, one of the dashboards from SH4 for Self. So it gives you the more split traditional data uh, you can get from analytics. It's, it's about a number of page views or other metrics, some graphics where your user is coming from, uh, search engines, direct referral. Uh, you can then easily get the uh, uh, most viewed pages on your site. Those are really traditional things. Uh, so the point is, with tools like SH4 for Self, for the basic uh, Google Analytics dashboard, you get very simple data. It's easily accessed. You can. It still. It still matters because this is where you're going to see the, the big changes. If suddenly all your page views drops by 50 percent, there's something wrong, and you need to act now. Uh, but all of this is not. It's not detailed enough to really use them on a day-to-day -day basis when you want to do SEO and you want to do marketing. So, this is the, the next slides are going to be about how we we do it. Usually. Uh, the answer to why do you have a website is because you can want to complete some goals. The goals are very different from one company to, uh, or one individual to another individual. Uh, you want things like sell products, you want users to download files, you want to send out information to users, uh, you want them to contact you, create accounts, they, you want them to call you, you want them to pick up the phone and call you. So you have many different goals, but normally if you set up a website, unless you do it for the love of Joomla, you have goals. You want there's something you want to achieve, uh, and how can this be uh, improved? We found that there are three steps. Users have to find you. If they don't know about you, uh, there's just no way they're going to come to your site and complete your goals and their goals. Uh, if they find you, if they become aware of your existence, then they need to decide to come to you. That's the second step. And then eventually uh, you need to deliver. If they come to your site, then you need to deliver. Now, so, so uh, the talk is going to be structured around those three steps. Uh, <coughs> the technical, if you will, translation of what I just said before is that first you need to, technically you need to get crawled, that your site needs to, be, get, to get crawled by Google and other search engines. Uh, they need to be indexed quickly, they need to accept it. Then this will uh, let people find you. Uh, then you need to rank for queries. Not only you need to be found, but you need to be relevant to what users are searching. Uh, and you also need to stand out, because there might be, most likely, many people standing out, or 
that are relevant to, to, to the same topic. So you need to stand out in the search. And then you need to complete goals. You need to deliver what you promised. Um, and for each of those items, there are things you can do. To get crawled or to get better crawled and index, you, you might have technical errors on your site, things you can fix. The structure may not be correct. There is some easier things you can do. To rank better, then you have count your content might be better, you can have more backlinks, you can have uh, better descriptions, there are things you can do as well. And same for goals. So, um, Crystal, at some point in her talk, I think, uh, two days ago, she talked about the scientific um, approach to things. This is the same thing here. It's more engineering, but the same thing. You, you're going to identify a, an issue, something, or a potential gain, not, not only issues. You're going to work on it, you measure results, and you repeat. And this is how things are done, and you have to repeat constantly. Like not, it's not something you do when you launch your site. You, you have to redo that uh, pretty much all the time. So now, uh, very fortunately, there are tools to help you. And I've classified those tools in, in accordance to, to each topic we want to, to, to look at. Uh, the way we do things uh, regarding crawling and indexing, most of the time we're going to be using Search Console. And there are s and some specific parts of Search Console. Now about ranking and setting out in SERP, again the Search Console, but other parts of Search Console. And to finally to complete goals, we are mostly going to measure, and this is done with analytics. Uh, first part then, getting crawled. Uh, the first tool we want to use then is the search console, the Google Webmaster Tools, is the crawl section. It uh, looks pretty, seems pretty obvious. Uh, this will tell you um, any errors um, in your pages they found. That's the first thing. So if you have errors, page that are four or I don't know, you have to fix that. Uh, you can also, um, the, the, the crawl area of the search console is going to give you the crawl stats and most, not, not most notably the, uh, the crawl rate, how many pages per day, per period of time you, you've been crawled. So that's where you want to look, again, to see things that are big changes, things that are different, changing. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, just to illustrate here, mostly those are slides from the launch taken basically right after the, the launch of our site. So basically before uh, this date we didn't have any content available, at least publicly available, and then they started crawling things about this date. So the crawl rate went up very quickly and then it sort of uh, settled down to a typical rate. Which may not be, and uh, is go not never going to be the same for each of you. So it's, it's changing the crawl rate, the number of pages they take in is going to be different for every everybody. Okay, so there are, in this area there are two two tools mostly we can use and we use. Uh, there's the Fetch as Google tool, uh, which is also a section in in the Search Console. And what this does, uh, it used to be a thing that you would use to try see how Google is viewing your pages. You know, uh, in the past they were not they were not running JavaScript, they were not seeing pages, they were not rendering the page. So it was more like uh, they would extract the text from your page and they would show that. But nowadays not it's not really used like that. They, you will see exactly what they see, but what they see is actually your real website. It's all rendered and with all the images, all the JavaScripts and all of that. Uh, it's actually now mostly used for, from where we stand to check the rendering, but also speed up. Um, indexing. When you have a problem, you do a change in your site, you fix the problem, and then you go do a, a fetch as Google, and it will search most likely speed up uh, the way they are re-crawling and re-indexing things. Because basically, fetch as Google does the crawling and does the re uh, and does the uh, the analysis of the page, if you will. So it's already done, and they just have to put it in the in the index. So it's it speeds things up, obviously. You cannot do that for uh, 5,000 pages because it's a manual thing. But still, for some pages, it, it, it's, it's good help. And then there, there are sitemaps. So sitemaps is something that I found from our users is rarely uh, used properly. The most common usage of sitemaps is to basically create a file with whatever pages, the total, the full list of pages uh, that you have on your site. And that's 
except maybe on the first day of your site, that's pretty much useless. That's not how you should use a site map. It serves no purpose and it's not going to help anything. So the way we suggest and, and do use a site map is to, lit, is to list there only the right pages, the important pages of your site. The pages you want search engines to index and let you rank for. It means you have to remove from that all the non-important pages like contact pages, uh, category pages. If you have a blog, typically you have a blog view with your articles and then you click and you go to the actual blog post, the actual, uh, actual article. There's no point in putting the category page in a sitemap. It serves no purpose. It's only going to compete for what we call here core budget or priority. So it's going to compete with your actual articles. And there's no, just no way your category page is going to be able to rank against uh, other pages. So you, don't, you don't certainly want to exclude that from your sitemap and only include in the sitemap the important pages, the one you want to rank for. Your products, your articles, if you, if you um, if you blog, things like that. Remove the others, just remove them. Now, if you do that, <coughs> you can then, we're, we're now going to look at Fetch as Google and the usage of sitemap. Uh, when you use Fetch as Google, the one thing you want to look for is this, uh, this column here, which is going to tell you whether everything is okay or not. In our case here, we've got a few rails here, and the status is complete, meaning uh, they can access everything and all is good. They can render the page, nothing is blocked. This one here is partial. It means if you've got something like either partial or a, something that's red, there's an error, you, won't, you need to click through and see what the problem is. Partial here we have means they can access the main page, they can start rendering, rendering it, but there are some uh, files or resources that they cannot access. Maybe it's JavaScript, maybe it's uh, some image, there's something wrong with it. So you want to uh, uh, click through and see what it is and maybe uh, work on it. Uh, now this is how we use sitemaps. Uh, Fetch as Google was the first step. Uh, sitemaps. So if you remember, uh, I said we want to use sitemap and just list there all the good pages. If you do that, then you can use uh, the metrics that are provided by the search console to, to compute two numbers that are really going to help you in uh, improving your, your SEO and, oh, sorry, click wrong direction, yeah. Uh, once you've submitted a sitemap, you can go to the sitemaps search console menu item and you'll see two useful things. Uh, the number of pages that you have submitted through sitemaps, and the number of pages that are indexed. Now, if you also go to the index status in the same, in the same uh, uh, main menu here, Google Index, you'll see that in total, our site at the time had 175 pages indexed. So from these three numbers, uh, here, what, here is what we suggest cap computing. The first is a, the number of URLs you submitted in the sitemaps, the good ones, over total number of indexed uh, pages. In our case, it's 96%. Uh, and that means that 96% of the URLs we really feel are important are indexed. So that's pretty good. And from the other number, the pages that we uh, submitted for indexation in our sitemap, over the total number of pages indexed, we can compute that 15% of the index pages are useless based on what we think. <coughs> so there's room for improvement because if there are many pages indexed that we think are useless, it means uh, the, good the good pages are losing, losing uh, authority, are losing uh, importance, and so we are doing less than what we can do. So these are two, the two key, I uh, didn't name them or anything, but these are really two key figures that you might want to compute in your own case. Remember, it's based on the assumption that uh, you put only, you list it onto, uh, only into your sitemap good pages, not just the whole list of uh, pages on your site. Otherwise, it's totally meaningless. Uh, what can you do when you have completed those figures? Then maybe if you, you, you remember, we have 96% of our good pages, good pages indexes, so that's pretty good. We don't need to really work on that. But if you have like half, on, half of them only, 
Then the kind of thing you want to look at is uh, your blocked pages. Maybe you excluded some range of pages in your robots.txt files, or you have some no index tags put where they don't belong. Uh, maybe there are some pages that are not linked from anywhere. So this is the kind of thing you might want to look at if you have a low number of good pages uh, uh, indexed. On the other, the other way around, if you have too many uh, useless pages, what I call useless pages, then you should do the other way around. Maybe you should uh, add more no index. You should no index category pages, for instance. Or you should check for your duplicates, <coughs> which is uh, so common with Joomla, unfortunately. Okay, so that's, that was the first part. Now, if all of this is solved, your site is indexed and you've got um, uh, plenty of people aware of who you are and, and what you're supposed to, to bring in. So, how do you rank for queries? How do you get above the crowd? And how do you send out in the results so that they come and, and, and see you? It's the same process. To, to improve that, uh, we've offered the same process. You find a problem, you, you work on it, and you measure the results and you do it again. Uh, oh, sorry, like, like I said, before, uh, here we're going to use the search console as well because this is where the data really live. Uh, so the way we, we do is we, we use the, the search analytics section of the search console. And we have this view which is pretty standard where we enable the clicks, the impressions, and the click-through rate. Um, if you don't know, um, clicks and impressions are uh, very clear. Click-through rate is how many people actually clicked on the search results to get to your page. Uh, we don't filter anything at first, and we select the last 90 days, which is um, the maximum num the, the, the maximum time time span of data you can get from analytics and search console. Actually, <coughs> not so many people are aware, but they don't keep your they might keep your data, but they don't make it available to you. So you, you can't go any further than the last three months when you search those uh, uh, through analytics or search console, unless you pay them like. $20,000 per year or something. It's pretty expensive. So, uh, when you do that, you get this kind of listing. This is pretty useless, of course, but you get that sort of thing. And this is what we suggest you should, you should look through uh, to see, to look for weird things. In that example, we have this first URL, which gets many clicks, uh, the most impressions, so it's the most viewed page <coughs> in search results, but the click-through rate is pretty low. It's only 3%. Uh, if you see our homepage, for instance, uh, or the other ones, documentation, whatever, uh, even for those pages, the click-through rate is like twice, twice as much. So there's obviously something you want to look at there. Um, you do that by clicking through. And when you click through, we do now do a better selection. We still have the same information <coughs> here, but we are going to, because the queries here is selected, uh, Google is going to tell us, sorry, which queries did the searcher, what, what, what keywords the searchers were looking for when uh, Google elected to, to show our SH4CF product pages. And you can see this sort of thing and you repeat the process. You look through that and you search for issues <coughs> that are weird. Uh, the Joomla SEO here uh, query uh, is something we would like to rank for. You know, uh, SH4CF is, is an SEO extension. And so, uh, impressions means that when people were searching for Joomla SEO, uh, Google showed our page for that time period uh, 8,000 times. It's more than most pages, actually. Uh, so Google thinks that this page, the sh 4 product page, is relevant to that Joomla SEO query. And nevertheless, nobody is clicking on it because the click-through rate is uh, less than one-tenth of a person. So it's really ridiculous. So there is a problem on that page. And this is what I suggest. You need to look for that sort of things uh, because that's where you know you need to spend your time fixing problems. There is no point in looking at the actual uh, sh 4 ceph query. When people search for sh 4 ceph Google shows the page and they usually click through it. They very more often click through it. So everything is fine. Don't waste time on that. This one is a big issue. Because this is the one, a query we want to rank for. And nobody is clicking. And we are relevant. Google thinks we are relevant to that. So it's important. We want to use that, but nobody is clicking. Uh, compare with that with the second one, which is SEO analytics, which we would love to rank for. And Google thinks we are pretty okay with that. There's zero. But I'm not going to spend time on that. 
because SEO analytics is pretty generic. There's no Joomla in it. So there's just no way I'm going to go over Moz or uh, SEO or um, Majestic SEO or people like that. There's just no, no way. So I'm going to concentrate on what I, what I can work on. Can I ask one question? Sorry, sure. This click-through rate, do you mean uh, when, go, when you search in Google yeah. and you get the listing of all the pages? Yeah, that's it. That's when, when people exactly. That's when people see a, a, a result with my page, yeah. but they choose they ch they select somebody else. They click okay. on somebody else's page. Okay, and the other clicks are clicks on the page. Or? No, it's it's uh, it's the same thing. Uh, but this is uh, the second screen is after clicking through. So I I first run without any queries, just a general global uh, statistics about. Uh, the number of impressions, number of, of time my website why this was displayed, or this page was displayed in the results, in the search results. And then I identify here that there is a problem with this page, so I click on that link here, and that gets me to the more detailed page here, where I see the clicks and all statistics, but only for this particular page. And when you do that, then you can see the queries that brought people, or didn't, did not bring people yeah. to my page, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. You just see, see impressions here is the number of times the page was proposed when somebody searched for uh, Joomla SEO. Uh, so if somebody searched for Joomla SEO in the time frame that we are talking about, uh, this this link here was uh, was displayed uh, a little bit than eight thousand times, and only five people clicked on it. So that's pretty bad reason. <coughs> uh, so once you've seen that, you're, you've seen that uh, the page is relevant. Google thinks you are relevant, which is the first step, and it's pretty good. But we don't use that. So when you have such problem, what you want to look for is uh, this is our product landing page. It's uh, it should be optimized for Joomla SEO. So we have lots of queries and lots of impressions. What you want to work for is the basically SEO work. You want to improve your title tag and probably the meta description. The title tag is probably good, but the meta description maybe is not good enough so that people are enticed, uh, enticed to, to click and come to our page. Uh, maybe the H1, H2, the, the headings, and the copywriting, what I, what I put in text. So that's pretty basic, but you, that's the point is to lets you find where, on which pages you want to, to spend time on that, rather than doing it, generally speaking. Uh, now you've done that, you modified your page, then the next step is going to be, if you're working page by page, to go back to Fetch as Google and reset and, and re-fetch and render that page. And this will tell Google that you've based on changes. They should look at it. And you can then, when everything is okay, click on that button, submit to index. Obviously, it doesn't mean they are going to do it right away, but it's most likely going to happen faster if you do that than if you just wait for them to recrawl and come back and come back. And so okay. that's really something you want to do. Can, after can you give an estimate, Jenny? No, I can't. Day or two days? I can't. It, I, I can't because it's really deep, it really depends on your site. Yeah. Um, you, you saw, or you may remember earlier, the crawl rate was like 15 pages per day. So they will probably, most likely, uh, come back to your site every day. But it really depends on the number of visitors on your site, the size of your site, whether it's really uh, really relevant to a topic or not. So it's really something you can't really count on. But I would say, uh, normally you're talking days. Especially if you click here. I mean, if you just wait, it might be longer. If you click here, you're talking about days, most likely. Uh, now, <coughs> you've made all those changes to the right pages and people are coming, you know, flowing to your site, you've got many visitors. So you, you want to deliver, you want uh, people to come back maybe later, and so you want to complete your goals. So we can't really help you do that, you need to have good content, good products, whatever, but you can work on it. <coughs> um, and the f so they, they, they might find and so, uh, find what they, what they expected when they clicked. You must also achieve your goals. You, you, you must sell. If your goal is to sell, you must sell. You know, so you, you have your own goals. And we're going to use uh, anal Google Analytics to measure that and try to find where there are things that can be improved. How do we do that? <coughs> um, it's the same process, really. Uh, identify a problem, uh, do something, and measure. Uh, 
we are going to use Google Analytics. So prior, before getting to the bulk of it, I would just like to sell you to, sell to, I would like to suggest you that you do something I do, like, it's like the first thing I do when I install, um, when I set up Analytics. Uh, you can use different view. view. You can set up as many views that you like in Analytics. And I would suggest you have the, you change the name of the default view, call it raw data. This is really basic, you don't do any filtering. And then you create another view, which is a filtered, and I, that I call filtered, uh, where and you, when you go to the settings of that view, you just click here, the bolt filtering. And this is going to, this is uh, something that will remove from the statistics anything they consider spamming. Uh, boats that just go and crawl your site. Uh, not, actually, it's not always spamming. It might be absolutely fine. Like, again, the, the SEO tools from Moz Pro or uh, Majestic and all that, but they just remove them so that you have data from actual visitors. As much as they can. Obviously, it's not, uh, it's not brute proof, but it's, it's as much as they can. Spam referrals. Uh, they also do that somehow. But they, they also do that. That's part of the spam part. But they are, they, they are also removing boats. That's the, okay, the good end of, end of that. So if you do that on our site, for instance, then the traffic goes down by uh, almost 40%. So, and I believe it's pretty typical. Uh, if you've got so many pages per day uh, on your site, then you can just consider that 40% of it is automated, automated machines, not actual users. So I would suggest that you base your analysis is and, and every work you do on the filtered view, actual users, not, not, not the whole bunch. Uh, okay, so now um, once you've, you've been doing that, you have a filtered view with only bots, then the f first thing you want to look at, uh, it's pretty obvious, I guess most of you have done it, but it's better said again. Uh, the first thing is to probably to look at the visitors, uh, what they use to come to your site. Uh, it was a terrible view for us because I spent like weeks, like a couple of weeks, making our site, you know, fully responsive and all the details with the, all the extensions that were, we were using and all that. And after a few months, I realized that in total we have like three percent mobile user visitors. So if you're doing Joomla extensions, uh, you know, Joomla developers they just use desktop or laptop, but not mobile to visit your site. And this this has actually gone down a year later we are way below 3% in terms of mobile. So obviously, that is not going to apply if you're doing a blog and you're, yeah, okay. But uh, for the kind of extensions we do, they, we just have 98% of our visitors are this stuff. So just check that. Just check that and decide what to do. Obviously, if you have, if you've seen my first talk, you need to install and accelerated mobile pages plugin to improve things there. Do you create a separate uh, view for Okay, that's actually coming to um, to analytics and search console. They are adding filters. Yeah. Up to now, they were suggesting that you actually had two different properties IDs for the AMP uh, visitors and for the your regular sites. They are still saying that, but uh, like this week, they are they they have added a, an AMP file filter to search console so that you can break down things. I haven't seen it yet. No, it's, it's being rolled out. So, um, for instance, you could say they announced it like, Google IO, like on Wednesday. So, it's, it's going to be happening over the next weeks, <coughs> probably. So, yeah, it, that's something you definitely want to track, if only to know whether it's worth spending time on. So, again, first thing to check, probably. Now, what I would suggest is also something that's pretty well known, but many people may not be doing it because they might figure it's, it's rather complex. It's actually not. So, what I would suggest is you set goals. You remember I said if you have a website, it's because you have goals to achieve. You want to do something. It's rather, usually it's rather easy to set up a, uh, in uh, Google Analytics, what's called a goal, and check that you are achieving what you want to do. And it's a very useful tool also to figure out why it's not working. Uh, setting a goal is simply the fact uh, of telling Google Analytics to take note when somebody is doing something specific on your site. For instance, downloading a file, creating an account, which might be one of the goals you, you wanted to have, purchase something, uh, reach a given specific page, maybe put up, uh, uh, leave a comment on your blog post, uh, register for your newsletter. So you can, you can measure that. 
you can also set up behavior goals. How many times, how, how much time do people set, uh, stay on their site to reading a page, etc. How is this done? Again, it's very simple. We, we went to the raw data view here, which is totally wrong. We, uh, this is a bad screenshot, and you, we, I should be doing that on the filter view. But so I'll just forget about that. Uh, and basically, you have a, the goals section under the, 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 the view that you want to use. Um, this is standard. They have templates for many different actions. And what you do is basically you set up the goal details. I want to consider this goal accomplished on my site when people reach the create an account layout is complete URL. So when, when somebody reached this page, uh, which is the one that's displayed after the registration has happened, then I consider my goal accomplished. And I tell Google Analytics to count that. Just click on save, and the goal is set up. So now uh, there's another type of goals that I mentioned earlier, which is uh, duration. You can set um, a goal considered to be achieved when uh, a user is staying more than in my case, four minutes, which is pretty long, actually. It's four minutes on a page is like you have a blog post and something that gives uh, food for thought. Otherwise, they're not going to stay that long. Uh, so that's another type of goals you can set. And once you've done that, then you can go to the goal, to the conversion, what they call conversion <coughs> section, and you're going to see how many people, you get the usual statistics about uh, how many people and when did they achieve the goals that you set up. So I can see, for instance, here that amongst all sessions, you've got many filters, you can drill down very much. Uh, I can see that uh, my conversion rate, which is uh, basically the number of people who completed the goal versus the number of people who came to the site. So we have like 2% uh, of the visitors to our site, the session, it's actually sessions. So 2% two, two, two of the people coming to the site to see us actually created an account. That's pretty interesting uh, way to know first. So if this is way too low before uh, against what you expected, then maybe you need to work on your uh, the way you advertise the create create an account with us or something like that. Uh, in our um, you've got pretty much you've got much more data uh, available in the same way. For instance, uh, um, it will automatically go analytics will already tell you much information about the people uh, who actually created an account. Uh, where were they coming from? <coughs> you know, search engines, uh, the JED, where, wherever. Uh, and this is all automatic. Uh, social network. So we're not very good at Facebook. Only one person came from Facebook and created an account. So that's, that's pretty bad. Well, that's pretty good because I, I don't use Facebook really. But that's <laughs> expected, you could know, say. So, uh, but I had other people coming and create the account, fortunately. Uh, again, you don't have anything more to do to get this kind of information than just setting a goal with the final URL, the final target to the, that people need to reach. Uh, so this will tell you, you know, this will tell you, give you feedback about what you do. You, 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 this way you can do testing, improve, change your layouts, do things like that, and Checking on the goals will tell you how effective your your what you do is. Um, for us, it, it might be to put more ads to put uh, uh, for us or for others. You can put more ads maybe to bring more people to the site. Like if you have plenty of people uh, creating accounts amongst them that come to your site, but you don't have many people coming, maybe you want to put more ads. Uh, maybe you need to work on the social networks. You know, do some promotion, whatever. Facebook. What's that? Phase. Oh, I'll note, I'll note the name later. That's good idea. Thank you. Uh, you can drill down a little bit more than that with, with what they call goals funnels. This is something we, we used a bit on our site. Uh, just expanding. Uh, this is a, this is a, another goals that we set, and this is what page uh, we go on our site when somebody completed a purchase. Okay, so we wanted to 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 look at that and. A funnel is is um, is a way to get just a bit more details about it. It's not only um, how many people and, and how many people completed that page, went to that page, completed the goal, but also which uh, which way through your site 
did they use to get there? Uh, for instance, uh, in our, in our, uh, on our site, you have two ways to get to the purchase page. Uh, one way is to go straight from, we have a call to action button on the product page. And then we also have separately another uh, pricing, pricing page where we have all our subscriptions. So you can go to the purchase page from both origin. And it's uh, an interesting to test to see whether uh, one of them is working better or not. Uh, so you, you do that basically here. We have, we've set a goal saying, okay, uh, whoever, uh, how many people came to uh, the purchase page coming from the bundle, the, the, the login page? And this is the sign-up page. So that's the main pricing page with all subscriptions. Should we keep it? Should we remove it? So we we get data from this kind of information. So you can set multiple goals, each with each uh, with each, each with uh, uh, many origins, where you can go to the purchase page, and then later you can compare them. Uh, and this is the sort of um, display you're going to have. You know, people coming from search engines, they went through the um, multiple subscription page, the, 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 the full pricing page, and they get to create an SSH for subscription. And you've got details, what they did, whether they went to that page but then exited. And this is data you can work with. So again, it's pretty easy. Uh, you need to look at it over time, of course, and not something instant. But it's, uh, it's something that lets you focus on what you have to do, what's, what's going to be efficient for you. Okay, that's pretty much it. I've put here a sort of a summary of the three steps uh, there is to uh, uh, getting more people to your site, getting crawl and index, rank, complete the goals you brought people to your site too and the tools that you probably want to use for each step. So that's pretty much it for me. And uh, I'll turn to you to, for questions or suggestions, like using Facebook more and that sort of thing. Thank you.